Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Omega B. A substantial part of the cars have long crossed the threshold beyond which restoring the body of to a decent condition doesn't make sense. But still, there are still enough live copies, and basically these cars with improved anti-corrosion treatment of the release after 1998, and especially often there are whole restyled models after 2000s. As for the older cars, I'm afraid that I won't have to look for corrosion. It clamps from everywhere. From under the moldings of the side windows of the doors, windshield frame on the pillars on the hood, fenders, doors, arcs, trunk lid. If you have no more than 80,000 to buy a car, you will have to choose between cars from categories trash on the way to the trash heap and trash but still similar. If nevertheless there are at least 150, then it's better to find every styled car. By the way, with all the external corrosion, the side members of the car, the attachment points of the subframe and the console, the engine shield, the body pillars may still be in very good condition. Of the power elements, the thresholds and joints of the windshield, windshield pillars and the engine shield suffer the most. If they haven't rotted yet, then you can take a chance. At the same time, check the drains of the aquarium. If there is water, then the corrosion of the windshield frame is practically guaranteed. It is useless to list all the places where corrosion can settle, but practice shows the rear arches and rear doors are the most troublesome, which necessarily suffer even on quite distant specimens. All other problems are age-related. In fact, almost anything can break, from door handles to wipers. But we must admit, even taking into account the age, breakdowns are rare, especially if the configurations are simple. The salon is initially very comfortable and well executed, albeit without much chic. Quite strong seats rarely break, even with extremely hard use. Fabric upholstery can withstand years well, but leather is most often dying. The climate system most of all suffers from problems with vacuum pipes and actuators of dampers, a pneumatic valve, through it you can lose antifreeze in a matter of minutes, as well as due to a failure of the stove speed regulator. The latter, for cars with automatic climate control on a transistor, is easy to repair, but for cars with manual adjustment, a burnout resistor will have to be selected, for example from a Chevy Neva. By the way, a resistor for the radiator fans is also suitable from it. A very simple electrical design helps out old cars a lot. If it was repaired by a component craftsman, competent craftsman, then there is a minimum of hassle, and mainly in the engine compartment. Serious attention should be paid only to the condition of the interior harnesses running across the body under the carpet. They are responsible for the operation of the central locking and some other functions. If the carpets are wet, which is almost always the case, then first failures begin in winter and then in summer. Moisture has already entered the wiring connectors. However, the failure of the rear door lock is more often associated with the connectors of the door itself. If all the doors fail, then usually the problem is in the driver's door, micro switches, you need to solder. Finding a live plug on disassembly, alas, is almost unrealistic. Occasionally, the locks themselves fail. The motor is built into the lock plug, but this will only become a problem if you use double locking when the lock is completely locked. In this case, there will be serious work to disassemble the lock case right in the door, and if you do not find a working octopus, it will cost you dearly. Native parking sensors more often do not work due to sensor failure. They simply fail over time, but the wiring to them is quite reliable. The door harnesses and boot lid are almost certainly repaired. Just make sure that the work is done carefully and doesn't lead to dire consequences such as fire. There were four airbags since 1997 and the condition of the side airbags on the seat is easy to check. If the error is on, then the fault is most likely the wiring of the seats. Even on 16 valve engines 2.0 and 2.2, there is an expensive titanium lambda. It is incompatible with the widespread universal ones and is indecently expensive. The camshaft position sensors are on the same 16-valve 2.0 die regularly. Sometimes demagnetizing the camshaft pulleys helps here, but most often they just need to be replaced. The PKV fails less often and without it the car can sometimes even start and drive, provided that the PKV DPRV, is in good working order, but its wiring is short-lived. If all is poured from the motor, and this is almost always the case, then the insulation simply crumbles before our eyes and inside the sensor too. Just replacing the wire is indispensable. The wiring literally crumbles and crumbles over time. After that, the idle speed disappears. In this case, the regulator itself can be arbitrarily clean or new. The injectors are pouring inappropriately, a lambda error may light up. In advanced cases, fires also occur because the injector rings have often already dried up and gasoline vapors can ignite after short stops of the engine. In general, leaks and the injectors with such wiring or leaks in the fuel rail can become fatal. 
check if intermediate rotational speeds are working, but if, when the radiator fan is working, the temperature on the dashboard climbs into the red zone, then most likely this is not overheating, but a bad mass of the motor. It is necessary to clean out the magnetic harnesses and lay a separate cable from the minus of the battery to the side of the ignition coil and temperature sensors. There are two of them on two liter cars, separate for the brains and the dashboard. Let's move on to the potential electrical problems of V6 cars, the main enemy of which is overheating. The electrical pump on the cooling system at this age usually no longer works, and the heating function is inactive when the engine is not running. Engines can also overheat at idle. They are very low here, and a simple pump is not very effective, and an electric motor can burn up the wiring to a pile if the impeller is jammed. For the most economical, there is a pump from Gazelle, but it's better to put on the original Bosch, it costs less than 3000 rubles. The clutch for turning on the air conditioning compressor is also rather weak, which doesn't last long on cars without the lower enters of the engine compartment. The generator on all motors is enough for about 200-260 thousand kilometers, after which it is very desirable to change the pressures along with the relay regulator. If the mileage is noticeably higher or the engine compartment is constantly dirty, then the slip rings are for replacement or a groove. Please note that many change their native generators for 100-120A to weaker options for 70A. They are generally enough for the normal operation of the car with the margin, but it will no longer be possible to use heated glasses, seats and optional rear window heaters together as input and on powerful music system. The Amiga suspension is simple, reliable and extremely cheap, but with one significant but. If the springs are of the required height and all the silent locks are set correctly, at the desired angle of installation of the levers. If the car sags or, conversely, is unnaturally raised, then the resource is noticeably reduced. More precisely, it becomes from the conditionally infinite to just big. So the front suspensions on cars 20 years old sometimes have clearly native levers and ball joints, and the front silent block is sometimes native. The rear silent blocks wears out faster and is usually replaced by mileage of 150-200,000. But with the illiterate installation of cheap suspension elements, replacements occur more often, once every 40 60,000 km, but much depends on the driving style. At the rear, the situation is similar. The two bushings of the diagonal lever are extremely reliable. More often, the hinges of the breakup lever or shock absorber bushings and its support are given up. The car is very heavy and quite soft, and when moving quickly on bad roads, the springs often break off. This is in addition to punctured crankcases. Jammed floors, spars, and dead bumpers. By the way, if you abuse the comfort of the suspension, it can break or jam the front spars. This happens with hard landings. At the same time, the suspension itself can quite successfully transfer such tricks. In general, everything is fine here. The front calipers turned over only with torn anthers, but the rear ones also didn't like worn out pads. Well, the parking brake mechanism is considered capricious, however, it's not a design flaw, but the lack of directness of the hands of car mechanics. Many workshops, out of habit, adjust the clearance in the parking brake drums only with the nut on the lever, although according to the instructions you also need to adjust the free travel of the pads using a ratchet through the hole in the brake desk drum. It should be noted that the brakes are weak for a large car, which GM quickly realized. In the process of production, the size of the front brake discs grew slightly, and the rear one piece discs for versions with a 3 liter engine were replaced with ventilated ones. The service life of the front brake pads on the car is noticeably longer than that of the rear ones when operating on dusty roads. In the front pads can go between 50 and 70 thousand, then the rear ones often have to be changed after 30-40. The steering, as I said, is of a classic design, which means there is both steering gear and a trapezoid. The car drives well, as long as all the trapezoid joints are in good order and can even consider it very driver-oriented. However, power steering leaks and backlash in the steering gear are common and expensive to fix. A new gearbox costs from 70 to 100,000 rubles, and a servotronic will cost 34,000, so do not be surprised that on many cars the steering has backlash and the parametric amplifier doesn't work. The power steering pump rarely fails, many cars still have the original one. Omega B delivers practically no difficulties in this area. The carton shaft is reliable, sometimes the coupling and support must be replaced, the crosses are replaced. The rear gearbox is very reliable, except that the lock-up options require special oil and regular oil changes. Manual transmissions are also super reliable, except that with first 3.0 engines or M57 turbo diesel they are at risk. Although the resource of the synchronizer of the first gears is limited and the gearboxes are prone to oil leaks through the stage seals, 
they do not care, cause any particular complaints even in old age and are inexpensive. Automatic transmissions here are manufactured by GM for L30E series. I must say an extremely successful series. Similar automatic transmissions were installed on BMW and on cars of some other brands. With glide operation, the resource of this box is very large. Although it doesn't like high revolutions, dirty oil and especially overheating. Due to age, it is quite difficult to find a living copy of an automatic transmission, but it is relatively inexpensive to repair. It often involves replacing seals and pistons, clutches and gas turbine engine linings. In total, it is about 9000 rumbles for spare parts and 5000 work. Although the masters, of course, usually try to dissolve for a much larger amount. This is not to say that the Omega's motors are unsuccessful, rather, on the contrary, like other German cars of the early 1990s, it received some of the best engines to date, quite competitive to by today's standards. The common problems of all Gazan engines on this model are the not very high quality of rubber products and plastic, as a result of which leaks and overheating have been pursuing cars from a very childish 10-year-old age. While I already talked about the work of the engine compartment electrics, there are enough problems, but for the most part they are easily and cheaply eliminated. But usually at such a price, cars also save in maintenance from motors and they require good hands, high quality consumables and spare parts. The four cylinder petrol engines are based on the same block of cylinders and even the 2.2 has the same block. X20 SE 115 horsepower 812 engines are considered the most unpretentious and the thrust is slightly worse than that of 16 valves. The design originally from the 1970s is exemplarily reliable and debugged. It is only necessary to change the timing belt every 60,000 km and monitor the oil pressure. The oil pump also wears out over time. Most of the failures are due to the electrical and power system, but due to their simplicity, these failures are again rare unless triggered. The secondary air system and EGR valve on all their cars are usually already muted and the rest of the control system components are quite reliable. The resource of the peasant group is more often about 300-500,000 km. There are cars that run 800,000 only with a light cylinder head repair and replacement of oil seals. More powerful 16 valve X20 XEV engine with 136 horsepower has a different cylinder head with a slightly lower resource of valves, valve seals and guides. But in fact, it differs little. Since 1996, it has a larger oil sump and is less afraid of oil outflow. And since 1999, balancer shaft and a new crankshaft with their drive gear have appeared. The motor also has a consistently high resource, simply designed and cheap spare parts. The problems are the same, except that the valves must bend here when the timing belt breaks and the replacement interval must be monitored doubly carefully. The control system has become even a little more capricious and EGR fail more often. The design of the exhaust manifold is unsuccessful, it cracks, so it is recommended to make slots in the contact plate with a grinder and before welding the cracks warm up the surrounding area with two blank seams parallel to the main one. More complex wiring from Siemens is poorly done, and the essence of the problem has already been described in the electrical section, but there is nothing to be afraid of, just need to be prepared for the whims of the old car. V6 series engines with a block camber of 60 degrees are not much more complicated than four cylinder engines. They are unified with them in terms of the piston group and cylinder head design. But besides the larger number of cylinders, there are other changes as well. The timing belt is noticeably more resourceful. A thick belt can perfectly cover more than 120,000 km. However, you should not abuse it. It is recommended to change everything the same way at 60,000. There is a hydraulic belt tensioner here and the car tolerates a decrease in oil pressure even worse. The weak point of the V6 is the oil heat exchanger in the collapse of the, block, of the block, which leaks from age or if the antifreeze is not changed in time. As a drastic measure, it is recommended to simply shut off the antifreeze supply and connect an external oil cooler. The layout of the engines with large intake manifolds, which need to be removed for many jobs, is a resource of criticism, but the operation is not too difficult. Another feature of the motors is very low idle speed, about 500. Because of this, the efficiency of the pump decreases, but the installation of options with a simplified impeller geometry is not recommended. You can overheat at idle. The many dampers of the intake system and the crankcase ventilation system also create problems for all the cars. But all this is easily repaired, just need to understand a little about the design. Diesel engines on the Omega B are mainly produced BMW. These are the well-proven engines BMW M51 and on restyling and M57. They are not common and, as is often the case with cross pollination, Opel services do not like them very much. It is recommended to go to the profile Bavarian. Through there, too, they may not immediately understand the features of the engine under someone else's hood. 
Rare Diesel 2.2 already flash of the flash of GM is considered rare, reliable, but as practice shows, if something breaks down, then often the qualifications of locksmiths are not enough to solve the problem. On this information about the problems of the Opel Omega B is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.